Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, transforming the way people think and work so their organizations can thrive. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Craig O'Neill. Craig was appointed to the position of Chief Executive Officer at VersaPay in 2013. He has spent more than 22 years of experience with enterprise software, and his background includes management of large development groups, designing and building foundational components of corporate system architectures and applications, overseeing enterprise CRM implementations, and driving strategic business initiatives. Craig holds a degree from the University of Toronto in computer science and mathematics. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Craig O'Neill. Thank you, Ed. It's great to be here. Well, first, Craig, tell us, why do you do what you do? Yeah, you know, I love that question. Um, it kind of got me thinking about sort of where, sort of where I've come from. I, I think I learned pretty early on about myself. I was probably in my early teens that I like to, to build things, to create things. So I got involved in music. I love to play the guitar. Um, and then I started to get involved in software and uh, went to school to learn how to be a coder, be a software engineer, went to college. And uh, at the end of that time, I had these two paths in front of me. I had an opportunity to become a, a full-time musician or to become a, a software programmer, which sounded like two very different things. But I actually found that they were similar and that they're both actually very creative um, roles. You're, you're, you're creating or building things. So I ended up probably making the wise choice of, of uh, getting into software versus music. Um, and then I had this choice to make, like, where do I want to, you know, where do I want to write code? And at the time, I remember as a kid you know, in my, you know, late teens, early 20s, whatever it was, getting out of college, I was thinking, well, I want to write code in something, you know, some cool area in engineering or aerospace or something like that, Not, but not business. So I ended up getting an engineering uh, job at a telecom company. <clears throat> But what I learned from that was there's all sorts of business problems, um, really interesting business problems to solve with software. So I ended up migrating into business software while I was at that telecom company. Since that time went from telecom to wealth management and now in um, payments and air automation at VersaPay. And I've, I've really had this passion for bringing um, you know, innovative ways of using technology to solve business problems and change companies and, and really change people's lives in those companies. And now at VersaPay, <clears throat> I'm kind of excited and I do what I do because I think we've got this opportunity today to change the way really hundreds of thousands of companies do business together. So, so it's a lot of fun. So that kind of change, creativity, um, you know, applying technology to business to improve businesses is, is really what motivates me to get up every morning. And let's explore that a little bit. Tell me about the macro change that you see coming for businesses today. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting, um, you know, with the impact of the pandemic, with, with COVID and, and how um, our lives have all changed, but how it's impacted businesses as well. And, um, you know, we've been on this journey for a number of years at VersaPay, um, helping companies digitize their, their processes around transacting with other companies. So, billing and collections and payment and allocating cash and doing all the accounting for that. Um, so it's commonly referred to as air automation. And if, if you'd asked me 18 months ago, probably one in 10 companies were making that a priority. Um, and now what we're seeing survey after su survey is saying, you know, there's probably seven or eight out of 10 finance leaders are saying that's a priority for them in the next three years. So clearly what's happened with COVID is we've all realized these relatively old fashioned processes of relying on people in offices to create paper invoices or to email electronic invoices and then receive checks and process checks and manually account for the inbound payments, even for electronic payments. Uh, but that manual work around receiving payments, that's just got to change. We, we can't rely on people. We can't rely on paper. And so it, it's a fascinating kind of macro level change that seven or eight out of 10 of hundreds of thousands of businesses are now thinking about and planning for how do we go through a digital transformation in the way we transact. So it's an interesting time over the next few years. I think the way companies do business is going to change drastically. Um, and almost everybody is thinking about how to do that. So it's a, it's a neat problem to solve right now and, and very relevant because, um, you know, we've all, all experienced working from home. 
I'm working from home right now as I talk to you, probably many that are listening are working from home. This is something that needs to get solved <clears throat> and solved quickly. So do you think we Americans will finally get over our addiction to playing the float? <laughs> well, you know, our our theory when we started to focus in this area, you know, that that's part of it, playing the float. But another big part of the delays that happen in transactions is simply what I call friction. Um, when you look at how the process between businesses work, it's a very disconnected process. You know, a, a, a company, a supplier of goods and services cuts an invoice, whether it ends up being a paper or an electronic invoice, kind of throws it over the wall to their business customer and then waits. And they're making a lot of assumptions in doing that. Did the invoice get through? Was it clear? Was it accurate? Did the right person get it? There's all sorts of assumptions that they're making that they really don't validate until time passes and either a payment comes in or a payment doesn't come in. And then all sorts of manual processes kick off to try and solve problems when there's problems. So we actually thought a lot of the delays that happen is not because of playing the float. I mean, there is some of that for sure, but a lot of it's just the friction that, that um, is in kind of in, endemic in the process. And that's really what we've seen. We see consistently by creating a good, strong, clear connection between supplier and buyer or vendor and customer um, that things flow much more smoothly, uh, payments happen quicker, and there's a lot less manual effort. So people's lives are better because they're not involved in a lot of routine work and awkward conversations. And are you seeing some of your customers start to move also to more of a subscription model too? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, uh, yeah, talk about macro trends. I mean, generally speaking, if, if, uh, if you can essentially rent versus buy, it has all sorts of advantages from cash flow advantages to keeping vendors accountable to giving your, yourself more flexibility to change. Um, so yes, there's a lot of that. Um, and that both creates some simplification in the transaction process and some complication in the transaction process. It kind of works both ways, but definitely a trend for sure. Yeah, I think when, when you said frictionless, that's what really keyed in me, the, this notion, because I think its, it's subscription model is, is pretty frictionless overall. It's done well anyway. Well, yeah. Craig, we have yeah. an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Yeah, again, another great question. Um, and I think my answer might be one you've heard before. I'm not sure. But when I think about, again, uh, what I love to do, which is apply technology to solve problems, and hopefully doing that in an innovative way. Of course, I can't help but think about Steve Jobs and, and what he accomplished at Apple um, and how we took ideas that kind of existed, but built on those to make them really fundamentally different and better than what others had done in the past and then brought it to market in such a wonderful way. So, you know, the, the innovative thinking, um, the ability to build great teams to deliver on his vision. The ability, I've often read about his ability to create a reality distortion field of, you know, making the what seemed like impossible possible for a team and then delivering on it. Uh, I, I just think he's a great role model in so many respects. Now, some of the ways he treated people and, you know, when he was able to create that reality distortion field is a, a bit above and beyond what, what I would um, espouse. But in terms of what he accomplished and mostly how he accomplished it, uh, he's a big role model for me. So I guess I could call him a hero. And lastly, Craig, how can somebody contact you? Yeah, so um, you can certainly find our contact information on our website. Um, there's a few ways to, to get a hold of us there. And another great way would be to, to contact us at the Partner Summit that's coming up just in a couple of weeks. We would love to talk to you then. All right, Craig O'Neill, Chief Executive Officer at VersaPay. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Ed. It's been a pleasure. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.